So um, I'm back here again. Uh, we're looking at uh, we're going to continue on with our videos, our series about um, uh, in the chemistry section, and we're looking at uh, properties and classifications of matter. Uh, matter is basically everything that makes up everything in our universe or everything on our planet and there are different properties and the properties are divided up into two categories and they're physical and chemical we're going to look at the physical properties that you need to have an understanding of and uh, the first one of these uh, is well there's four of them here okay one of them is boiling point uh, then we can look at uh, of course we can look at uh, melting point okay, and all of these you need to have an understanding of of course when uh, a chemical or, or an item freezes and uh, when does it condense so condensation point okay now these are not the only physical properties but this is a physical change that it undergoes so it doesn't actually alter the chemical makeup of the substance but it alters uh, the physical makeup of that substance the physical properties we're not actually changing the chemical makeup of it but this is ductility and this is the ability to be stretched okay or bent uh, the when we look and we change the state of something or the state that it's in it doesn't actually change uh, and over here is malleability oh, I think I forgot an eye malleability and over here of course is color the chemical makeup of it is not changed but the physical appearance of it is changed when we look at this set of uh, physical properties we have solubility and that is the ability to dissolve okay, in something here is whether it forms a crystal so crystallization and here is conductivity oh, conductivity and then of course over here is whether it is magnetic so magnetism okay and again the actual chemical makeup of the material isn't changed at all so this brings us to our chemical properties and basically what is a chemical property it is uh, when we actually change the matter of something or the material which it's made up with so over here we have uh, the ability to burn can it burn um, over here we're going to look at whether it tarnishes in air okay, does it actually tarnish here we're going to look at whether it corrodes and in all of these the matter is changing we cannot change it back it's a chemical property and I think you have looked at chemical changes last year um, so this uh, again is something that cannot be reversed here we have decomposition decomposition and over here we're going to look at whether it creates a gas or um, bubbles are formed and then the last thing we're going to look at is whether how does it react uh, with blue and red litmus paper so if these two of them if we do a test if it remains red or turns red then it is an acid if it remains blue or turns blue then we are dealing with a base so once again when we look at uh, chemical properties it's something that is irreversible we cannot turn it back the physical properties that we looked at earlier those are all reversible we can turn those all back we do not change the matter or the chemical makeup of the matter uh, whereas chemicals uh, chemical property we're actually changing the chemical makeup of the uh, of the matter itself so how do we classify matter well matter is broken up into two components uh, it's broken up into pure substances and mixtures and when we look at pure substances the pure substances are broken up into two separate categories uh, elements and compounds mixtures then are broken up into four areas 
uh, solutions which are homogeneous and what does homogeneous means it means that you cannot tell uh, the difference there are no two parts so a solution if we had salt water you cannot see the salt within the water it looks like one thing then we look at mechanical mixtures so a great example of a mechanical mixture now we can see two parts and a mechanical mixture might be something like uh, granola uh, or oatmeal with raisins in it you'd be able to see two different parts uh, suspensions so what is a suspension? If you have, again, we looked at a solution that was homogeneous, a suspension would be something where you could see um, that it's not quite uh, like a super saturated solution uh, where you could see parts floating around in that. Now, an example of a suspension would be having chocolate chips in a milkshake. Uh, you can see, or berries floating around in yogurt. You can actually see the two different parts. Now colloids are very similar to suspensions, but uh, within a suspension you can easily separate the two parts. Colloids are very difficult to separate the two parts within those. So again, the classification chart for this, if you want to refer to it in your textbook, is on page 14, figure 4. Um, or sorry, uh, if you want to look in your textbook, you'll find a chart with all of this on, on page 14. Um, it's a good idea to, to take a look at this and know it and study it. Now this leads us to chemical reactions. So now that we have an understanding of the properties, we're going to look at the chemical reactions. And what, uh, in order to have a chemical change, there needs to be a, or in order for a chemical reaction to take place, there has to be a chemical change. Now how do we know that there's been a chemical change that's taken place? Uh, here again, we may have a gas that's released. Uh, here we could have a change in color. Okay. okay, change in color here. Okay, we're going to have a temperature change. Okay, where heat is released or heat is absorbed. And we may also have, um, we're going to have energy given off or consumed. And all of these, a chemical reaction, it's irreversible. Okay, we cannot reverse it. And that's the biggest, okay, cannot be reversed. And I would say that that's the biggest thing that you need to remember. Of course, you need to have an understanding of all of these different things, and we'll get to this a little bit more. Um, but basically, that in order for a chemical reaction to take place, the actual matter itself changes and it cannot be reversed. So this brings us to the end of our second video. I'll see you in class.